If you've owned or skippered a boat that has a generator, you know that their operational reliability is one of your prime concerns. When they go down, they're sorely missed. So apart from carrying appropriate filters and spares and staying on top of maintenance, you might consider getting ahead of things by modifying your raw water cooling system. Why? Why, you might ask? Well, salt water, even a small amount of it, will ruin your generator if there are any leaks that go unnoticed. And there's a good chance there will be, especially if your generator lives in a sound shielded box. So let's look at the problem and consider the solution. Here's the typical impeller pump that comes with the next gen gen set. In this case, it's a Jabsco, but they're all pretty much designed to leak at some point in their lives. Whether it's the cover plate, the gasket, or the seals, you're going to get leaks. And in the case of the seals, you're going to have to break down the entire pump to fix the leaks, assuming you have the new seals. So how about doing away with the Jabsco? How about getting rid of the leaks altogether and without causing a bigger problem later? So let me show you what we did aboard my boat. Maybe you'll consider trying it on yours. Our generator lives below the cockpit sole. That's it in the white hush box. As we come in on it, you'll see my solution was to remote mount the raw water cooling pump in the form of a fully waterproof and a highly reliable 110 volt magnetic drive pump. Of course, this pump must be installed below the water line to work, but if the flow rate meets the manufacturer's requirements, you'll have minimized the probability of destructive saltwater leaks. So let's check the specs and run through the installation notes. Here you see the March pump specs show an 8.5 gallon per minute flow at zero lift. Our cooling flow circuit lifts water to the siphon breaker, which is about two feet above the water line, yielding over seven gallons per minute, well above the required six. Now let's check out the raw water circuit as it enters the boat through the through hull fitting, then onto the Groco salt water strainer before entering the 110 volt March pump. I'll lay out the electrical wiring next, but for now let's follow the water up to the siphon breaker, which is the pump's lift high point, then down to the hush box where the engine cooling takes place. We're using 5 8 inch hose and a 3 quarter inch Groco strainer as the specs require. Wiring the 110 volt pump is not problematic if your generator representative will give you specific instructions as mine did. Then, like me, you'll need a licensed marine electrical technician to inspect or make the wiring connections before you test it. That being said, let's look at the hookup that runs my 110 volt pump. Simply put, the pump plugs directly into the generator's electrical box using its unused 50 amp breaker stud for the black, while the other two both go to the ground stud at the other end of the box. That's it. No on off switch, no panel breaker, and no long wire runs. When the engine starts, electricity goes directly to the pump, and it's not dependent on the main switch. The pump runs whenever the engine runs. It also stops when any of the safety sensors shut down the engine. That's a pretty bulletproof setup in my opinion. So there it is, about a $275 dose of preventative maintenance for your consideration. Let me know what you think of this video. I'm Sailor Sam.